Well, hey there, my friend. In this video, we are gonna talk all about the Cricut Monogram Maker. So the first thing I wanna say about the Monogram Maker is um, it's right over here in this toolbar to our left-hand side. Now, the Monogram Maker is something that is only available if you subscribe to Cricut Access at this point in time. That does not mean that if you do not subscribe to Cricut Access that you cannot still design and play with it in design space. And it, you can get a feel for it to see if it's something that you would use frequently and it might be another reason why you'd want to consider Cricut Access. Now the only reason you, the only way you won't be able to use this if you are not an Access subscriber is when you actually go to hit the Make It button at the top. If you're not an Access subscri subscriber, it will not let you go any further without purchasing. You can, however, design and play with them to get an idea of how to use it here on the campus. So here is just a few examples that took me literally a couple of moments to put together, just pulling from the Monogram Maker. So let's go ahead and click on it and sort of explore it. I'm going to click on the Monogram Maker over in the left toolbar, and then a sub panel is going to pop out here. The first thing you'll always want to do at the top is to insert the initials that you want to use. So my initials for my business is Abby Kirsten Collections. My maiden last name is actually Kane, so Abby Kirsten Kane was also my original initials before I was married. So I've put that in here, but you can put up to four initials. So just know that if you want to add four initials, you can. My daughter actually has two middle names, so in her case, I would put Christabella Grace Sue Gillespie. So you could actually do four if you want to. Let's go ahead and just put it at three for now since that is the most common. Now there's lots of people out there who say, you know, should you put them in order of your name or should the center one be the last name, um, the first letter of the last name? That's really up to your preference. I don't really believe there's a right or wrong way to do it. Some people would say that the wrong way is in sequential order, but most people feel like it makes sense for it to go in sequential order, right? So just choose what works best for you, what you prefer, and that will be perfectly fine. So let's explore what you're going to see here in the monogram maker. When you put in your initials, you'll get some initial designs here that'll pop up, and you're gonna see some different values and selections and drop downs that you can set. So over here on the top here, we have where it says operation type. So if you click on operation type, right now it has three different settings. It has any operation, cut only, or cut and draw. Now the beauty of the cut and draw selection is any line that is a draw line here that they might produce in this monogram maker is something that could be changed into a um, deboss line, engrave, engraving line, a foiling line, any of those can be changed even after you created the monogram. So if you think you might want to add one of those elements into your monogram, then consider looking for the cut and draw operation selections. For now, I'm going to leave it on any so we get both in our selections down here. So the first thing you have here is two menus. You have classic and you have thematic. So classic here is going to give you some different um, styles of font for your text that you will see. If we click on the modern one, you're going to see all these options here. And this is what is available to me at this time, but I would not be surprised if Cricut adds onto this and updates things as time goes on. So just be on the lookout that you may see some additional text styles appear here. So if the modern look isn't working for you, try some of these other options here. There's elegant and handwritten and all of that. Also, I want to call to your attention under each one of these, you're going to see some frames that are populated here. And these can be used to complement any of these designs. So if I go back to like the modern here and I were to select this one, we see that this one doesn't have any frames to it. But if I click on this one, there is some frame options and they become available with different selections. If I click on this one, we see some different options here where they're actually adding draw lines and pen lines on top of the cutout options. So we could just click on one of those and see that example with that particular font. And then don't be afraid to click over because there's actually more as you click over. You can even use these little arrows here to just shift through all of them and then go back the other direction. So that's really cool as well. So as you look through these, just pick one that you like. So they have lots of different options. They have this really pretty like 
a decorative one. They have this one here that has these floral designs on it, which I think would be really fun. And you also have a few other options here with handwritten. So handwritten is going to be more script-like, cursive. They have lots of um, Operation Pen and Draw in here. You'll see all these little icons here where it has a little pair of scissors or a little draw. Those are going to be what it's going to um, create as. So if I were to click on this and then add this to my canvas right now, it's going to come in as a draw line. See up under Operation here, it's saying it's a pen under draw but we could also change it to one of these other options foil deboss or engrave as well so that's what it's going to come in as but you can change it to one of those other options if i were to select any of the ones that have the little scissors next to it let me just select one of those and hit add to canvas you see that the operation is basic cut because it had those little scissors so it gives you that information as you're working in here now what happens when we go over to the thematic tab so the thematic tab gives you not only text options here so look at the different if you look here under this bar and I were to click through any of these see how it goes on there for a bit and it keeps scrolling over you have these um, different selections here that you can pick from and then what you're being given under the thematic is you're giving basically frames and styles in which that monogram will be shown. So we have botanical, and as you can probably guess, it has some sort of floral element to it, whether it be a simple vine or a more floral frame or anything like that. I think that one's really pretty. And every time you click on one of these, notice here underneath where our selection for our monogram um, font style is, it changes. So they've selected different things for you that they think works best with that particular type of theme or frame. So if I click on this one, see that we have these options here and it goes over quite a bit. I can keep clicking. Whereas if I select this one here, actually this one here, it only comes with three options. So there's not a whole bunch there. So what if you want to use a different initial or a different font with a particular uh, thematic frame? You can absolutely do that, and I'm going to get into that in just one second. I just want to walk you through the other subcategories here. So under this thematic, again, we have a decorative, and if you click on each of these, you'll see different fonts here, and then it'll have some sort of supporting element. It might be a frame, so a lot to choose from, and these are some great options to pick through. We have occasions as well. So with occasions, you have, um, you know, some of the most popular things. So weddings and graduations. You have some um, apples here, which would be great for like teacher appreciation. We have fall and seasonal things. I think the snowflakes are really cute and pretty. And once again, if you click on any of these, you'll notice that your selection here for the actual text changes in what those center monogram letters are actually going to look like. So just always kind of play around with what you're seeing there. Let's take the little pineapple one. That's super cute. You'll also notice with certain ones that it only shows one letter. Um, this is just showcasing the last name of the person. So notice that there are some where it shows two letters of the monogram or it shows one letter of the monogram. And these are just different things that Cricut has put together because they think it works best. But what if you want to be able to play with these and mix and match basically customizing it even more so there's a very easy way to do that let me actually pick one here i'm gonna go to let's take the pineapple because that's super cute so with the pineapple being our example here it only allows us to have one of our letters from our initials placed in there but i'm going to go ahead and just add that to canvas okay so i'm going to add that to canvas and real quick i'm going to get these other ones off my screen. So I'm just going to group them and then hide them over here in the layers panel. And we're gonna work with this one. Okay, so we just added this one. I'm gonna go back to the monogram maker because let's say I don't like having just the single letter there. Maybe I want all three letters shown. I'm gonna go back to classic now. I'm gonna go under modern and of course you could check out the other options and I'm gonna do this one because I like the circular nature of this and how it's showing up. So I'm gonna click add to canvas like that. 
So I'm gonna select the pineapple there and take a look at the layers panel to your right. Notice how we have all these different layers in here. So Cricut was really great when they created this because it didn't it did not limit you to it being like one image, like one flattened, one layered image. It actually comes in as a group where you can actually select different pieces. Now in order to select different pieces, you will need to usually ungroup first. So use that ungroup button up at the top. And you also may need to detach. So look down here in our layers panel, even though we already ungrouped, but you can also see down here that it is attached. So we need to detach it to be able to move these pieces and select them individually. So I'm gonna detach it. So maybe I wanna get rid of that G that's in there. I could select it on my canvas over or over here in the layers panel, and we could either hide it or we could just delete it all together if you want. I'm just gonna delete mine. And I'm gonna take this monogram instead. I'm just gonna enlarge this a little bit here. I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna bring it in here because I like that. I like having all three letters in there. Maybe I also wanna change the colors that are represented on my canvas here because I'm gonna be using a different color material. Obviously with a pineapple, yellow and green are probably what you're gonna go with, but maybe this little brown frame around that goes in here, maybe I don't like that. I could eliminate that altogether if I want, or I could change the color of it by selecting it and going over to the color swatch next to the operation. And maybe we wanna change the color. So that's more my style. I like that a lot. Same thing with the actual monogram letters themselves. If you want, you could come over here and maybe change them to a different color altogether. So that would be, of course, up to your preference. And if you wanna get advanced with the color, the shade of the color, you could, of course, come down here and change what that's going to look like. So for now, I think I'm gonna do, actually, I really like that. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna make this match. Okay, so there is my pineapple monogram design. So I used the monogram maker there, but I totally made it my own because even though Cricut was giving me one version, I could bring in multiple versions of the monograms and I could create my own and really customize it that much further. So don't be afraid to do that. Let's take another quick example here. I'm gonna look under the vent. Actually, let's go back to thematic because that's where I find that I like to use that, those options that much. I'm gonna choose the little apple, because I think that's super cute. And I'm not even gonna worry about the, the, the inside of the monogram, the actual letters. I'm just going to get it on the canvas real quick and then go back to the monogram maker. And I'm gonna go over to the classic tab and I'm gonna take a closer look here. Okay, so I like this one here under elegant. What I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna add that to canvas and I'm going to go over here now. Look here, I wanna show you. When we add this to Canvas, in this example with my apple, I wanna do a single monogram letter in this example, okay? We, we switched it out with our pineapple, but this time I wanna do a single one. But notice when I bring this one in, it's one layer. It's not like this one here, where you can like see the leaf as a separate and a the apple as a separate piece and the frame and the letters. So what do we do in this case if we want to just grab the G, for example? Okay, so let's say we have a teacher and they're, like my husband's a teacher, his, uh, so he's Mr. Gillespie to his students. So let's say we're making this as a gift for Mr. Gillespie and we just wanna do G for his last name. So what I would do is I would click on this and go to the contour function that's at the bottom of the layers panel, give it a moment to load, and then we would hide, you could always hit hide all contours, and then only click on the ones you wanna bring back. So I know I wanna bring back this, this, this. And you may have to zoom in. Okay, and once you've made that selection, you would just close the box out and it would reflect here on our screen. And it looks like I actually missed a piece. Let me go back and fix that real quick. Sometimes the contour button can be a little temperamental, so I do hope that Cricut improves that in time. All right, I'm still missing pieces here. So let me show you another trick since we're on the subject of this. What if I don't wanna have to click around the contour button and it's just not working well for me? What can I do to make this easier on myself? All you need to do is come over to the shapes panel here and grab like a square. You can get it for free. Let it load. Come over here 
and cover whichever portion you want to get rid of. So I wanna get rid of the rest of those and I don't wanna to have to hunt and peck on the contour function. So I'm gonna click and drag over both of those and use the slice tool. And then I'm just going to delete that entire area and now we have this result completely on its own. So that's another little hack for you. If the contour function is not working very well, you have a lot of little pieces you have to click away, try doing that option. Okay, so back to our design here where we wanted to add this one in. I'm gonna ungroup just like we did with the pineapple. And we see all those pieces ungroup. This time I didn't have to detach, but um, just always check that in case you do need to detach. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those. I'm also gonna change the color of this, I think. I want it to be, I like bright colors in my business, if you don't know me at all. Oops, not that color. I'm gonna actually change it down here. And change the color red to be a little bit brighter. Okay. So here is our single letter now, and let's just shrink that down to size and bring it in here. If I want, I could also maybe get rid of that little extra circle in there by deleting it and then getting it in like that. Okay, so that's kind of cool how we were able to change that out. So one other thing I do wanna show you real quick before I wrap up this tutorial is changing things. Let's look at a cut and draw option. Let's take this one here. Actually, I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. I'm gonna add this one to Canvas real quick. Okay, and I'm going to drag this up. So remember I said at the beginning that you can change anything that is a pen line here or a draw line, it's also known as the same thing as a draw line. You can change it to a foil or an engrave or a deboss operation as well. So you're not limited just to using a pen. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the group here and I'm gonna ungroup this on my layers panel. And I noticed that it's still attached together. So I need to use the detach tool down here in order to select things individually. Let's say I want my initials here to be foiled on instead of written with a pen. We could go up to operation with those letters selected and change it to foil. There we go. It doesn't look like anything much happened because it was already kind of that color, but this is now a foil operation. We see that reflected here and over in our layers panel. Same thing for the other items here. You could select any of these. Maybe I want to deboss the flowers onto some paper. And so we want it to look kind of like a debossed edge or impression on the paper. And then, you know, with this piece here, maybe this one is also foiled. Maybe there's no pen involved at all. And we want the letters foiled, the, the little frame foiled, and then the flowers are debossed, just as an example. So we were able to change all of those pen lines to some other operations and use them with the monogram maker. That's really cool, right? Now it's really important that when you're working with pen functions and deboss functions and foiling functions that you're using your attach tool before you go to the cut screen. So make sure you click and drag back over this once you've made your changes and you click the attach tool at the bottom. Otherwise, it will literally foil on one mat, it will deboss on another mat, and it will cut on a third mat instead of all doing it in one spot like you want it to do. So just be mindful of that. All right, so what questions do you have about the monogram maker? Let me know. I would love to help you, and I can't wait to see what you're going to make with this. I think it's a great addition to Cricut Design Space.